Thank you for clicking on this video and today what I'm going to share with you is five things that I would tell my younger self when I was learning Flutter. So a little bit of background of myself is that I was learning Flutter back in April 2018. So that was when Flutter was in beta and there was a lot of moving parts in Flutter. There was a lot of bugs and such. Oh, the good old days. And the thing is, there are some things looking back that I should have done to really excel in Flutter or to be a better Flutter developer. So the first thing is that another backstory of myself is that before I was learning Flutter, I had only nine months of development. So meaning that I was just starting out learning development or learning coding. So I went through a three months bootcamp. I was learning web development in Ruby on Rails. Then after that, I had a six month of internship exploring a lot of different tech, like for example, like blockchain or game development. So I was picking up like JavaScript or Python or even C sharp, you know, and yes, there was a lot of languages that I was exploring, but I wasn't good at one language. So the first point that I want to tell my younger self, or maybe you guys is that master one language fundamentals, meaning, for example, if you love Flutter, learn the Dart language fundamentals. So Dart language has its own documentation. It has its like its own tour language. It's really, really very long. But I assure you by having to read what is available and what are the features are available inside the Dart language will really help in any kind of development that you're going to pursue in the future. So if you are doing Flutter, then you can make use of the Dart language in order for you to solve certain problems when you're developing a Flutter app. So for example, so the most common thing that the Flutter team use and the most uncommon thing that I think most of you guys use is the feature assert or assertions. So in my time when I was doing Flutter development or when I was learning the Dart languages, assertion was something that eh, I think I don't need it. When I was working as a Flutter software developer, I realized that assertion was very, very helpful. So for those who don't know what is assertion, imagine you have a widget that you use and you input a certain value that wasn't supposed to be in and then you suddenly see the red screen of death. Most of the time it is an assertion and what an assertion requires is that it needs a conditional. For example, if the value is equal to null and then the second thing is it's optional but an error message or message that you want to show when the assertion fails. So for example, if you were to put in a null value inside the text widget for its text, right, it will shout a assertion error. And this is very helpful because you are going to avoid those bugs in the future. And those people or those new people who are joining your team and they might put in certain values that's not supposed to be inside any widget that you have created will suddenly know that, oh no, I shouldn't use a null value for a text widget, for example. So assertion feature, I will really highly recommend. The next thing is that you should aim for readable code. So I have been an advocate for clean code. And if I were to go to different GitHub projects, I will really appreciate if you really have readable code. And the thing is that people don't usually teach how to write readable code. And the thing is, when you're working in a team or when you're working as a software developer, even if you are a sole developer, readable code will help your future you. So for example, if you are in a team and there's someone new who joins the team, the newbie will read the code base. And if the person don't understand, what is the newbie going to do? They are going to ask you questions and sometimes you are in the train of thought solving a problem and then someone wants to ask a question about it and then you lost your train of thought. So the thing is I'm not saying asking questions is wrong but what if you have documented or made the code readable enough for the new person to understand and will not take up so much of your time in asking questions. Wouldn't it be great? So the thing is this will really help people who are joining the team and also help you because 
in the future there will be bugs there will be bugs we are not perfect coders so when there is a bug you tend to read your old code and if you don't understand uh, your code then it's going to take a longer time if you were to have readable code so if you're even if you are able to code out something excellent and then suddenly nobody understands it is it readable code i rather have a simpler way for you to solve a problem with simple code and understandable documentation understandable variable names understandable function names that gets the job done so avoid having variables that have one letter avoid for loops that uses the letter i please don't save us some time and your time for us to read your code by creating readable code once you learn the fundamentals and practice clean code the next thing is to follow the conventions of a certain language so sometimes you might be from the javascript language sometimes you might be from java language sometimes you are from another language and they have certain things to do a certain way the most of your things that you might have came across when you're creating a string in the dart language is that it wants you or it prefers that it rather has single quotes than double quotes javascript really wants your strings to be double quotes but in dart it really wants you to be in single quotes and then another thing is that for example for constants or in dart there is this thing called enums so enums is a great way for you to differentiate different type cases for example having a container to have a shape of a circle or rectangle and enums will really help in that kind of use cases so sometimes i see people use enums with capital letters so what that language or there is this part in the documentation that says effective dot so effective dot shows you the do's the don'ts and the preferables so what people prefer or what the flutter and dart team prefers is that your enum should be lower camera case the same goes to your variable names and your function names not your class names though and this will really help make a dart really readable and i think that's what the aim for dart language is is to be very very readable something like what ruby aims to be back then when it was popular to be a beginner and readable language so if you want more information on what are the do's and don'ts and the preferables of the dart language you can head to the dart language website and there is this section that's called effective dart i would recommend you to read it this will help other flutter or dart developers to read your code because there is a standard of on how to create or name your variables for example so another thing that i faced when i was working as a flutter developer is long lines of code meaning more than 400 lines of code you might think this is normal no 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 i'm talking about one widget that's 400 lines of code and it is very very bad because i guess it is very hard to debug there's a lot of logic and it's very bloated with widgets and logic for just one widget and the thing is one thing i should do differently which is my fourth point is to refactor your widgets i think i have talked about it in my previous videos but i can't stress enough so by refactoring your widgets this will make your widgets into smaller widgets and then with these smaller widgets you can make these smaller widgets into its own file so with this it makes your widgets so much more reusable if you have a button that is specific to the design for your app then you can use this same button for another for example another screen so if you use it for your sign up screen you can use it for your login screen so by having to refactor your widgets it will help you not only being reusable but also debugging i can't tell you the experience that i had when i want to debug a 400 lines of code of a widget it's super super stressful and it's annoying you know so i really had to refactor in order for me to really have a better and faster debugging experience so for you guys out there who really wants to become a better developer please refactor and make your widgets into smaller smaller widgets 
funny story is that I had an intern in my previous company and she wrote maybe three to four screens of the app in one whole file. So the whole file consists of a thousand lines of code. And I was like, when are you going to refactor? And the intern was like, I'm, I'm going to refactor soon. It's like, no, 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 you're not. Refactoring is not a goal. It is a habit. So once you know that your file is very, very big, then you should refactor it to another file and into smaller widgets. So I did the same mistake when I was trying to learn Flutter. I had 400, 600 of lines of code for one widget and it was a pain in the to debug. And lastly, once you know how to refactor, the next thing is to learn providers <laughs> or inherited widget. So back in the days, there wasn't a provider package or there wasn't like block or mobex package. State management was still in the limbo of like whether this is good, whether this is bad. People were still thinking of what state management was good. But so having a state management means that your different widgets also have to listen to the different changes of data in the app itself. So one thing that I should really understand was the inherited widget. Even though a lot of people back then say that you should use inherited widget, I had no idea how important and how to use the inherited widget because I thought back then widgets were UI stuff because widgets are like your buttons, your app bars and whatnot. I didn't know that widgets can just hold a data for you to send across your widget tree. So inherited widget does that. So luckily providers was created because inherited widget was too much of a boilerplate for me to pass down even simple data. And back then when I didn't know how to use inherited widget, I manually created parameters from one point to the another. So an example is that, so if I have a data that I want to pass down at the top of the widget and there are two widgets that separates from the widget at the bottom that needs the data, I will create the parameters. For example, I want to pass the integer value of one to my button. And the thing is, if there was two widgets in between, I will create a parameter called value or number and then I'll create another parameter inside the next or children widgets that's called value and then my button won't have the parameter that's called value. So it is a pain in the to really manage and maintain that code base because if I didn't need the value, I will have to delete in my parents' widgets that I'm listening to. So that was really painful. Once I know how to use inherited widget or once the provider package was online, oh my God, it saved me a lot of time. So for beginners out there, I really recommend you to study how to use the providers because it is such a good tool for you to pass down the data. Providers are not state management, they are tools for you to use with your state management. So for example, if you have used block before, providers are already inside the block package. If you have used Mobex also, providers has been implemented in the package. So even though you use block or Mobex, I would still recommend you to learn the provider package because there might be certain cases where you just need a simple provider in order for you to pass down to another widget. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you think this is useful, subscribe down below and comment what advice you should tell yourself when you were a younger Flutter developer. So that's about it. Stay safe and all the best. Bye bye.